turn this down. <laughs> <laughs> my my let's get it on. I always listen to like do you guys those of you that are watching us do you um have like music when you're working do you have music that you listen to I do you know Xander was asking me um the other night what song what one song would encapsulate me oh I know mine I know what's mine. that what's that um Hotel California is my favorite all-time song, Eagles. You know that's about getting caught in a dream that you can't escape from. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> just, I can't get out of it. <laughs> no, I like I everything for, like goes in slow motion with that song for me. Everything is just wild. That is so funny um mine is burning down the house uh talking heads oh <laughs> yes well just the the title alone i have to remember the the lyrics but yes just the title alone makes sense yeah well i mean how did i spend my life working on volcanoes working in kitchens you know generally not living in the status quo <laughs> so yeah that's totally um, you totally you. yes yes i'm going to type that question in here to ask our friends yeah hi oh, everyone hello. represent what's one i can't spell Hotel California. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, so, um, I, um, so you have your watch party going with this? Yeah, that is so cool. Are you seeing the comments from my watch party or no? Um, I don't know. Do you have comments? Yep, I'm having lots of comments. And I'm able to start a watch party on my own, but isn't that a little like that's like a lot? But now we're like that's like being on LSD. We're tripping now. Or <laughs> just no, I think that's if I want to share it onto something else. So it wouldn't be a watch because we're zooming live onto my facebook page yeah. so a watch party is if i then want to do it on like a group page or something like that as well i yeah i think that my, my brain would start screaming joyce says that she doesn't have a song that represents her joyce that is your homework for 2020 <laughs> <laughs> that a song that represents you uh, Hi, Martin. Hi, Diane. I'm seeing all these people come in. Oh, hi, Martin. <laughs> uh, hi, Patricia. Okay, so um, Uma, I am so excited. Um, first of all, like I know you and you know me. What yeah. cracks me up is, as well as we know each other, we don't really know each other that well. Like, we know each other really well within what's important to us, like yeah. our spiritual side, our intuitive side. We're both amazing mothers. <laughs> um, our enjoyment of raucous laughter, the fact that we love doing programs together. Um, we sure do. Yes. And, um, and there's a lot about you I admire, you know, your business savvy, um, your ability to make things happen. Uh, you know, you're you're very inspirational and definitely like no BS, uh, which I appreciate. I would rather have someone blunt in my face than <laughs> falsely polite. Martin says, hey, Uma and Benita. Hey, Martin. Hi, Martin. Hi, Kristen Gilbert. 
let's let's shout out Kristen because we like to shout out our fellow healers. Kristen is the owner of Wave of Lights. Hello, oh, Kristen. hi Kristen, and hello Denise. Hi Patricia. Um, so I just wanted to mention to everyone why of all the people who could you could read with and all the people I could read with why we decided to read for each other yes. and yeah and um I think part of it is like I can't wait to get into your crazy brain <laughs> <laughs> It is so crazy in there. <laughs> People are like, what do you? Yeah, okay, so I have to tell you, mm -hmm. um, I did Emory Genetics. Where they like to tell you what kind of leader you are. Yeah. And one of, the, one of the groups is conceptual. Like you're not very grounded and strategic or analytical. You're very like big thinker. I'm 95% conceptual, which means there's only 5% people in the world. <laughs> that is more conceptual than me. So yes, it gets little. <laughs> sure does, ma'am, sure does. That's funny. When I did, um, you know, all of those kind of tests that they make you do in the corporate world to see who will work best with whom, yes. I am always almost completely in the middle of everything. Aww, I'm like equally so life- perfectly balanced. <laughs> I am. I'm like equally right brain, left brain. I'm equally creative, technical. I'm equally introvert, extrovert. Like, so uh, I'm like the perfect person for everyone to work with. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. And by the way, Martin is sending love. He said, loved my session today, Benita. So oh, totally that was amazing. <laughs> Martin, you're such a cool guy. And yes, really? I look forward to like uh, doing more work together. You are fascinating. He really is. I, I love the Martin stories when Martin comes and he brings us stories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for today, also one thing I value about you, Uma, is of all the people, you are the only person who spent the time figuring out with me how we can meet on Zoom and then live stream to Facebook. <laughs> yeah, we did it that day. <laughs> this is our awesome. third time. I did it. Yeah. This is our third time. <laughs> we had to figure it out. And then Rob yeah. dragged into it and Rob didn't know what the heck was going on. And we were just like, you're going to do this. You're going to do this with us now. We need to see if there's three people that could fit on this. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it sounds basic, but we had to practice two times to be able to do it live this time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. So everyone, what we want to do today. <laughs> tonight, Are we recording? Did we start recording? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm recording on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, here, I'll start recording on here too. On there we go. Yeah. So there we're we recording go. everywhere. We're recording on Zoom. We're recording on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. All right, so hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our first time of doing live readings um, in this awesome internet universe. Um, <laughs> and um, let's see, so what will Uma, you'll read for me first. And these are gonna be quick reads, guys. We're not gonna be doing like full yeah. sessions. And so then Let's talk a little bit about that. Benita came up with this really great idea. And I immediately when she reached out to me, I was like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so Benita's, um, she's going to be doing this with a bunch of different people. And I'm probably going to do the same thing because it's such a great idea. And she said, you know, we all do different kinds of readings. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be cool if we were to demonstrate the readings that we do so the public can see what a reading is like. So that way, if they wanted to purchase a reading, they now know they have an idea of what this reading is and then they can purchase the reading if they want to. So I was immediately like, definitely. And then I'm leaving for Mexico tomorrow. And I said, I gotta, I gotta do this before I go. And when we set it up, I realized, and I told Benita today, I said, this is my last event of the year, of the decade. And I'm doing it with one of my best friends. I mean, you could, spirit couldn't get more synchronistic than that. So I'm very excited to be here with you guys and to demonstrate how I read and, and for you guys to see how Benita reads and then just to take your guys' questions and anything that you want to know about what we do. 
that sounds great. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward too. to this. <laughs> all day. Kristen, yeah. by the way, Kristen Gilbert says she loves us both and she's saying hello to you. Hi, Kristen. Oh, I love Kristen. I know. Kristen's so amazing. Yeah. Like, amazing. And just so you guys know, and so you know, Uma, even though we're going to be also doing this with other people, Uma and I both have like so many different ways of doing reading um, that we're going to be reading for each other a lot. <laughs> a lot. Because I have so many. Different, like, I'm doing the annual reading, a little snippet of an annual reading for you today. But I want to do like your Akashics. I want to do your past life. I want to mm -hmm. do your soul plan. Like, hello, I have so many readings. So, yes. Right. And I want to do your tarot. I want to play with pendulum. I want to do chumpy stones for you. Oh, I want to do your stones. cosmic connection. Like, yeah. This um, is playtime for us guys. So you pointing <laughs> in with us is, is just making it that, that much better. Exactly. Okay. So Uma, you're going to read for me. Um, yeah. But we're Wait, not going to do the that. whole year. I'm interested in February and March, maybe. Okay. So, um, well, we'll see if we have time. Or February. I, it'll February. probably take me 10 minutes to do one month. So okay. what I'm doing for Benita is, let me just set my timer. What I'm doing for Benita, I do an annual reading where you guys can book me and I read for the whole year. And it takes me about 90 minutes to do. And I tape it just like this. Like you'll see me and you'll see all my decks. I have um, three, four, five, six, six decks that I read from. So um, I'll give you a little bit of intro. I use my angel tarot. I ask three questions out of this, like which is your theme of the month, your challenge of the month, and what's advice from spirit. And then I have another advice card that I pull either from the goddess deck or the ascended masters deck. And even though Bonita loves ascended masters, for whatever reason, goddess just wanted to pull for her tonight. So we're going I to love the goddess, goddess deck too. Yeah. yeah. And then I pull your crystal for the month. <gasps> yeah. Cause it, it's so important like that. I don't have my chain on right now, but I, I pull a crystal for myself every month. And if you guys don't know Katie Carlton, she's the owner of infinity energy wire wraps. She's special makes me, um, my pendant for the month, every month. No. And, so I already have all my, my things. And I just have to write Katie and tell her what they are. And she knows she does the Uma special, which is just big and bold and sassy. They're always huge pieces. And I'm like, is that who I am? I'm like, I guess. And then I pull a healing card deck, which is what the ascended masters um, and Archangel Raphael want you to know about your healing for the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, and what again is Katie's business name? Because she does beautiful, work, uh, beautiful work. I'm so, like, this is the first time I'm not wearing her piece. It's infinity energy wire wraps. Yeah. And Katie's and, mom is B Carlton and she's an yes. amazing angel reader. Like these are names y'all need to know. And here's the thing about our community guys. We are not in competition with each other. Like we will tell you, go to Kristen Go to, for me, I will tell you, go to Kristen Gilbert, go to Robin Wolf for mediumship readings, go to B Carlton for um, angel readings, go to Katie for jewelry, go to Cheryl Gianelli for anything crystals. Like, yeah, it's, we love supporting each other because we all do it just a little bit differently and all the messages are the same, essentially. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, guys. I've been missing out with all these comments here. <laughs> Kristen sent me hearts. Hi, Alexandra, Victoria, Pierre, Louise. Girl, that is a long name. You got to shorten that thing back down. Oh, that's Alex. Hi, Alex. Yeah. And this is, wait, wait, wait. My hand is disappearing. This is my Moldavite wire wrap from Katie. Oh, I and, love. Oh, my God. It's this beautiful. I love Moldavite. Large piece of Moldavite beautifully beautifully wrapped so since you're not wearing yours I thought yes I feel so bad because I always I always um I always wear stuff from Katie and I'm so I'm so upset that I didn't wear it tonight that's so funny yeah yeah so I'm gonna put mine on yes you put yours Katie. on and then I'll feel good like I'm representing Katie yeah. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, Benita, before I start this timer is, um, do I have permission to read for you and to specifically read? Now tell everybody why, because I asked Benita to read January, but she didn't want me to read January. So why did you want me to read January? You got a lot going on. January um, is uh, when my guru will be here. 
for the first half of January, Guruji Arun Kumar and, um, oh, sorry, I took off my little thing here. Uh, Guruji Arun Kumar arrives on January 1st uh, before he returns to India on January 13th uh, with um, uh, Priya, his divine right hand. They're going to be here uh, working with me, teaching Prana Shakti. Um, we're doing four Prana Shakti workshops and Uma got a little taste of casual Prana Shakti the other day. Yeah. Prana Shakti is this incredibly powerful ancient, uh, it's based on Hindu work, but you, you can incorporate anything with it because it opens you up to connect with all frequencies in every dimension. Every single frequency in every dimension at the resonance of love on up. So you don't have to worry about buggedy boos or whatever coming near you. And you become a divine conduit that whatever needs to come through for whatever work needs to happen comes through. It's mm -hmm. very, very powerful. If you do like already do Reiki or any other healing, when you back it up with Prana Shakti, it like supercharges the modality you work with. It's really, really, yeah. Nothing like getting literally all of everything from everywhere to support your work. So um, it helps. It's, you know, I love it, obviously. So in January, we're doing Prana Shakti all month. It's going to be this intense Prana Shakti month. And then in February, I'm going to Mexico to hang out with artists and shamans and indigenous healers and archaeologists and write work on my books, you know, be at the Monarch Butterfly Sanctuary and a hummingbird sanctuary and many hot mineral springs and a lot of hiking. And uh, one of my favorite things going to archaeological sites with the archaeologists and I space out and I tell them what messages are coming to me and they ask questions and ancient spirits answer. It's not anything they can use legitimately, but it's always no, but really fun. I giggle because we are such like star sisters. I do the same thing. <laughs> I go places and I'm like, you know, there was a murder here, right? And the wife did this and people are like, do you have any proof? And I'm like, well, I guess we can look up the proof, but I just know <laughs> it so strongly, you know, it's like, well, what am I going to yeah. tell you? Well, it's really fun working with archaeologists because when they're trying to research like what happened thousands of years ago, if they're given any kind of direction, it really helps them a lot. And when some rando girl from McLean, Virginia, who doesn't know anything about this culture, is able to give them details that help their work, then you know, that, that's really nice. That, that's um, why I love doing evidential mediumship. Um, I recently had a woman come in to see me I didn't know, but her husband passed and I brought through messages from him. And it was just, I, you know, gosh, he was, you know, randomly you would think, why would he play her a flute? And I'm, I'm like, I'm just gonna say it. And I was like, ma'am, I need you to know he's trying very hard here to play you a flute. And she busted out crying. He had flutes, he loved flute music and oh. he would play her flutes. And that's how she knew I was real. That She told me that she was like, that's how I know you're real. I was like, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they call it evidential medium. Evidential. So, medium. Yeah, so this is why February, like January, we know what I'm doing. We know what my January is about. But yeah. February is when I start manifesting. I'll be working on my online school and um, uh, sort of going forward to my future. All so right. I, I'd like to know what February has to offer. I am happy to do that for you. So, um, <laughs> Victoria says, love this collab between you and Uma, and she's so excited that your guru is coming back in January, so definitely um, ping her, Alexandra, Victoria, about all your guru stuff that's coming Great. up, um, dates and everything, because she's definitely interested. Okay, I'll post it in the comments of, of this. Yeah, well, she's on my watch party. That's the other thing, Benita, when we do this- I'll post it in your comments, too. Well, you can't because you can't leave your party. So here's the thing. No, the after, time, after. Oh, after. Okay, because the next time we do this, 
Um, I'm thinking I don't need to do a watch party. Once you tag me, I can be in. My people can okay. come in. So we, now we know. Now we know, guys. <laughs> We're learning. We're learning. Okay. So, Benita, do I have permission from you to read for you for February? Oh, yes, please. Okay. So the first deck I'm using is the Angel Tarot deck. I'm pulling three cards, which is the theme of February for Benita, the challenge for Benita, and advice from spirit. Okay. So let's see what comes up. Okay. That's one. They really want to fly. <laughs> That's two. And let's see your last one. That one's flipped out. Three. Got it. Okay, so now I have her three cards. Um, I'm going to pull her secondary advice card. And I had the choice of either um, ascended masters or goddesses, but the goddesses wanted to speak to Benita. And usually it, for me, it's kind of like an extra guide that you have for the month. So let's see what goddess is going to be with you. <laughs> They're all want to be with you in February. <laughs> only one girls, only one <laughs> can be with Benita. There we Ooh, go. One flew out. <laughs> one flew out. I love the way you shuffle your deck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> then we're going to see what healing message Archangel Raphael has for her for February. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to pick her crystal. And usually I like the crystal because the crystal tells me um, like what it's going to do in terms of helping her. Usually it pertains to the challenge, but it doesn't always have to pertain to the challenge. There we go. Oh, I love this crystal too. Okay. So, Bonita, for February, <laughs> I have to laugh. Oh, my Lord. Um, let me look at you. Let me <laughs> come off of the uh, Facebook so I can look at you in your face. Your theme is love in February, and I'm crying laughing because that was not part of your plans. You like, I know you had so much things you wanted. I can love myself. <laughs> no, this is no, sweetheart. This is <laughs> No, no, ma'am. This is this is a hot, hot. Oh hot, my! Romantic. Listen, the Knight of Fire. I like the Knight of Fire because he's he he's a playboy, but he's not a playboy just for the like. He's a man who loves love. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're gonna get the special treatment with this. Okay? <laughs> oh my God. Dinners, um, you know, poems, whatever is the works. Now, um, usually people ask me like, "Well, this is this long term." I don't know. It depends on him. Mostly he's just <laughs> in love with the idea of love, but there's, there's a very big emotional component for you in February. So I do see the possibility of a relationship or a love interest coming in. But like you said, water cards for me in this deck also has to do with psychic and intuition. And mm -hmm. I feel that you're going to also be strongly, um, tapping in to your intuition and following the intu intuitive guidance. So the theme of the month is about following your intuition and creating from that space, which is perfect because of what you, I know what I know what you want to do. This right. is alignment spirit saying that you're going to be on the right track. So everything you see, feel, hear, and know is coming straight from them. Your challenge though, and I can see why your challenge is um, king of fire, which is me. It means staying focused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is this this guy is focused. He gets that gets things done. He goes from A to Z in a very straight line. He's committed. He's the leader. And I feel because water and fire don't mix. So right. I, I re, that's why when you were like, it could be me falling in love with myself. And I'm like, yeah, it could, but it really feels like somebody else that's going to distract you, which, you know, like I believe in everything happens for a reason. And if for whatever reason spirit wants you to be distracted, then you're going to be distracted. So your challenge is going to be staying focused on tasks at hand. So what I'm going to tell you off of this card is if you had 20 things planned for February, then pick five. And pick five that you really want to concentrate on and that you say, okay, I can commit my time to this because for whatever reason, you don't know yet, but I do, <laughs> you know, the energy is not going to be there for me to really 100% hone in. 
the advice from spirit is um this is a time of family for you 10 of, of earth is my family card it's one it's financial security and stability it is also like spending time with your loved ones so the reason why february might not be the ideal month for your kickoff um, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I'm saying that you're going to start it. You're going to do it, but you might not get as much accomplished is because there's other things on the horizon for you for February, which is more, you're going to be more concerned about your family and spending time with them. And then also there is this possible love interest coming in. Um, your, <laughs> your extra advice card from the source. I'm like, I can't even say from the goddess deck, the goddess is Rhiannon. I've never heard of her. I think she's Celtic, but sorceress. And that's who you are to me. You're like oh. the, the, the sorceress. So it says on there, you're a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. So what it's wanting you to know is that come February, it's going to be a very high vibe month for you to really set the tone for the rest of your life. Um, we get some of these special months. I call them boons. B-O-O-N-S. It's like, it's gifts from God. And mm -hmm. you get these special months where it's kind of like if you used to play Mario Kart, you had that like little ramp that would ramp you up and jump, jump higher and faster. So your February is going to be like a boon month where you're going to be able to go very, very far. And um, your healing card from Archangel Raphael is you, you're doing well health wise. It just says, listen to your intuitive feelings. So when I get a card like that, what that tells me is that um, you are going to be okay concerning your health. There's nothing like there's other cards in there that have some more some more significant meanings. That just tells me that um, you're going to be really focused on your self care, and you're going to mm -hmm. be really focused on taking care of yourself. Again, going back to that self love, and it's also like there's a lot of love and relationships that's coming into play for you for February. Okay. Now, your final card, which is your crystal, what spirit wants you to have for the month of February. It's one of my favorite. It's, it's kyanite. Oh, how funny. I love kyanite. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. Thing, I did my annual reading this year. And um, for those of you that don't know, I rebranded. I'm not Lotus Wellness Center anymore. And the colors of Lotus Wellness Center was purple and green. The colors of my new business, which is called the Lotus and Light Metaphysical Center, is teal blue, gold, and white right and all most of my stones are all in blues all in blue mm. it's just amazing so pretty much kyanite um is about harmony mm. okay and i read the book because i you know i know about crystals but i don't know enough to like mm -hmm. give you the full gist but basically it's about harmony and fixing things that like disputes or any sour notes in our life that have not turned out well it's about tuning into ourselves and working towards harmony. It's about growing, becoming stronger, um, creating honesty within yourself and with other people. You know, oh, they talk about relationship. <laughs> That's fun. I've never known Kyanite for relationship. Wow. Like you were... <laughs> We, you heard it here first, folks. I called it. Okay, Benita's going to be in her relationship in February. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were just talking about kyanite and relationships. Oh, yeah. it's so funny. It's hilarious. So it's about like creating healthy relationships and healthy communication and relationships. And I was like, wow, I didn't even realize that part of it. So my reading for you, I like to sum it up. My reading for you for February is it may not go the way you wanted it to go in terms of what you wanted to focus on because your focus is not going to be there, but it feels like a very joyful, light, fun, happy, passionate, exciting month. So you can't go wrong. Um, you know, you might want to look to March to really kick things off and get things going. That's my reading. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, yeah. Jen. Hi, Andu. I'm so sorry, guys, I didn't get to see you. <laughs> yeah, and hi, Leah. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> so that is so funny because I got to tell you uh, where I'm spending most of my time in Mexico, um, I'm going to be on holiday with my mom. So oh, my mom and I are mom. sharing a room. Aww. Okay. We are sharing a room together, which a little bit limits 
this hot romance you're talking about. <laughs> oh, wait, are you still in, in Mexico in February? Yeah, I'm, I'm going in February. I'll be there February and March. Girl, listen, I have some, <laughs> I have some good then, memories. I have some good memories of, of traveling, even with family. I'll tell you sometime, not here. <laughs> but um, it will be still possible. Let me tell you that, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> words. <laughs> but here's the funny thing is where we're going, uh, San Miguel de Allende, which is in the mountains of Guanajuato, it's the first city of Mexico. It's a very ancient place. Um, and um, the, the downtown area is like the same buildings, even the same cobblestones in the streets as it was like over 500, 800 years ago extremely beautiful ancient city full of you know like there's um lots of people there but there's a lot of americans there um uh, like usually like really cool fun americans a lot of older americans and wherever my mom and i go there are older women who warn me to stay away from the men because they already have their dibs on the men <laughs> Listen, you're going to pick up one. I'm going to tell you right now. People Uma, on the season, they are, they're hot for no. something. <laughs> Uma, these men are like 80 and 90. No, not this guy coming in. He's going to be like a Casanova. He might be like older than you, but he's going to be a hot little thing. Like you're going to, you're not going to be able to help yourself. So, like, because all the people I hang out with, they're like either, um, People I'm doing work with, you know, like the the shamans, the earth keepers, the yeah. galactic gateway openers, the archaeologists, the artists. Um, and those are people from like local indigenous and people from all over the world. Or like old. <laughs> we'll talk after, okay? Because <laughs> I will <laughs> let you know about some of my stuff. You need to know about because this is about to happen for you. <laughs> this is going to happen. That's so funny. You know, if it happens, <laughs> I will let you know. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. I, I have to say, know. you're not the first person who has been bringing this message up. Yeah, so. it's clear. It's very clear. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so um, I I was like, checking in earlier thank you that was really good I love the way you shuffle cards you know, <laughs> it's so different from how I shuffle cards I, I love watching your way <laughs> oh okay because I yeah I've been you know doing this for, as you you've been doing it for so long you find your way and you're like um I used to pick cards until the cards just started flying and I was like okay yeah. here it wants to pick so not a problem yeah yeah, you know what? I'm going to, um, I've got my wall of cards right behind here. I'm going to grab a deck. Yay! I always like card reading. <laughs> my shamanic flute and my rain stick almost went flying. I have to read the book on this girl, Rhiannon. Does anybody know this goddess, Rhiannon? She's going um, to be with Bonita in... Um, yep. But I'm pulling Sacred well, I Traveler. That. I love Denise that. Lynn. I love Denise Lynn. Okay. Of course, I'm all purple. Purple background, purple clothing, purple card deck. I'm all gold and white. I need to add some blue. <laughs> some blue. Okay. Uma, may I draw some cards for you? Yes, please. Okay. Here, let me get a little higher up on, in my old team. And I will keep a track of, well, I can keep a track of the comments in my section. Okay. Martin said, awesome. Hi guys, if you're coming in, you can feel free to ask questions as Benita's doing her thing. Okay, and what message do you have for Uma today? So, Your middle card wants to be two cards. Mm. There. Okay, so my love, 
the way I do it is um, I do the first card is the situation. Yeah. The middle card is the path. And then the final card is um, the, the destination. Okay. So your situation is vast vistas expand your horizons. Ooh. All right. So, which is um, relevant, of course, because you have you have rebranded your business. You've realized that the business you started took you to a point that supported you to go to your next point, and now you're like starting your next point again. Yes, you've come a very long way from when you had a massage therapy school. You know, or even when I was a massage therapist. Yeah, yeah, and now you are becoming. Um, more interested in global healing and raising consciousness in like huge amounts of connections. So when they're saying it's expand your horizons, <laughs> like that. that's just, look at that. That's like expand uh, into the Akashics. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Expanding. <laughs> All right. They're, they're, um, it's not just about starting a journey. And it's not just about growing and evolving yourself. You are taking horizons and sending them out, like my backdrop here. Yeah. So when we're looking at what is the path, I love this. The first one says cleansing waters, purification mm -hmm. activates vibrant life force. And where am I going right now? I'm going to Mexico tomorrow by the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And what was it that you said about water? being intuitive yeah oh it's um from my deck water is about emotions and being intuitive and your psychic ability so you are to purify yourself with water i love it and think about purifying your psychic intuitive state of being you know there's never any accidents when you read from me and you say this is what this means and then the next card i draw is exactly that yeah. you know that you are preparing this information for yourself. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about purifying. I love it. When I teach cord cutting, I tell people it's not about cord cutting, it's about cord cleansing. You are releasing everything below the frequency of love. And then you're looking at the connections of love. You're purifying them, amplifying them, magnifying them, right? Yeah. So here they're telling you to cleanse and purify your energy, your being, because all things are possible. Choose your own path. I love that. And here's what I love. The first card, there's a man looking out in the distance. Yeah. And the second card is a man getting ready to travel the distance. So the two of them together, when they choose not to disappear, <laughs> really harmonious. I love I choose... going into the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so by purifying yourself, looking at your life as it is at the moment, doing your own purification, which is like cord cutting, which is like releasing, becoming emotionally neutral, looking within yourself at all the aspects of self. When you are preparing to manifest your new path, by purifying in advance, yeah. you're going to be helping manifest what your new path will be. Here's what is manifestation. You look at what you have now, you look at what you want to have, you see the connection, release everything that's blocking or stopping, and then you become one with what you want. Yeah. Which really, this, when you look at it, expand your horizon, which is like planning, cleansing, purifying, and then choosing your journey, choosing your path, claiming your life. This is all about manifestation. And yes. who's the queen of manifestation? Right here. <laughs> uh, yes, you are. <laughs> so this is your path, cleansing, purifying, going forward. And it brings you to 
fellow travelers, support is all around you. And look at that. You've got a peacock and a rainbow and a beautiful vista there. Aww. This is really lovely. This is very powerful. You well, said I'll, when it's time for my feedback, I'll get like, you won't believe how on point you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you are rebranding and I know you went to a lot of effort to rebrand. There was no need on a business standpoint for you to rebrand. No. You had to rebrand because your soul was telling you Yes. It is time for me to take all of this to the next level yes. and not like, oh, the lazy way you did it a hundred percent. Like that's the ultimate. We're cleaning house mm -hmm. and we're going forward with the new state of vision. This was a huge commitment on your side. I don't yes. think, yeah, I don't think people realize mm -hmm. how much time, effort, money, oh, how money. much thoughts so you redesigned everything you had to reprint all your stuff you rebuilt yeah. your website and that's just on the business technical level on a spiritual level you really looked into yourself and said you know it's terrifying when you, you know you have a spiritual cash cow like you know that you could live really well forever off doing the massage therapy school mm -hmm. you don't even need to go further yeah but for you it's not about what's in it for uma for no. you, it's what can Uma do to help everyone else become their best? Mentoring is important to you. Huge. Helping. Yeah. Huge. So you literally redesigned everything away from what was the big financial success towards your vision of what you must do to help the planet. This is why I love you so much, because you see me. <laughs> it's so hard. Like you've literally put into words what I write in my journal at night. So it's you see. <laughs> and um, yeah, you you were spot on about everything. And I have to tell you guys, like you need to book a reading with Benita because <laughs> not a lot of people can read me. And it's not because like I'm I'm hard to read. It's just that sometimes a lot of people have fear when it comes to reading me. Um, because I'm like known as the reader in our area. So um they tend to sometimes get it right sometimes get it wrong but bonita is just like a hundred percent spot on and that shows what's most important about that for me is that she's connected in and this is why i argue with readers is because i see a lot of ego come out in readings and that bothers me but when you see somebody who's connected in the whole time that's the kind of reading you're going to get which is just a hundred percent on point so i'm going to validate you now because i think it was great yeah. um about the cleansing waters the reason why I had to rebrand and yes, I got a lot of backlash for rebranding because Lotus wellness center is known in the area. I mean, I've traveled mm -hmm. out of the area. I've gone to Florida and introduced myself and people are like, Oh, you're the owner of Lotus wellness center. I've heard of them. I'm like, how the heck did you hear about it in Florida? Mm -hmm. You know? So it's all over. And why would I do that? Why would like Benita said it was a cash cow Lotus wellness center. Everybody knew I didn't even have to introduce myself. People knew Lotus Wellness Center. Well, I did it. I rebranded because there was a lot of pain in growing Lotus. I unfortunately was the victim of many people with ulterior motives and a lot of um, their own inner child trauma, whatever you want to call it, that unfortunately got vomited back out on me. And over the years, I've been, I had my business for 10 years. And over the years, um, I just stopped loving what I did because of these people. And there, there's not all of them, but there's a few of them that really just made this very uncomfortable and painful for me. Mm -hmm. So as we were approaching a new decade, I said, I got to wash this clean. I have a brand new staff, brand new, amazing, beautiful energy, brand new friends that are just amazing. All of you are. And I said, I got to remake this in the light of who I truly am, which is all about light, love, peace, and harmony. And that's why that came about. So that cleansing waters for me is very important that you pull that because I have been doing cleansing of myself, of letting go. Because one of the things I'm having a hard time is forgetting. I forgive, but I'm having a hard time forgetting. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had made it a point when I go to Mexico to go into the beach and do a cleansing ritual in the ocean water. So that's why I had to, I was laughing because I was like, you're so spot on. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of expansion and, and going and going further, um, it keeps coming up for me that people want to franchise what I do and that my space needs to be larger. And I've been fighting it um, because 
part of a lot of what I do is so intimate and personal and I love that one on one, even if I'm in a class of 20, I can still create that one on one. Now, if we go to a class of 50 or 100, you know, that's where my worry comes in. But what you're saying to me, Benita, all those cards you're pulling about the expansion, mm -hmm. I keep getting it all the time. So I'm going to listen. And I'm going to trust that spirit will still maintain my intimacy that I demand that we have. <laughs> They're going to have to create it some way, somehow in larger spaces. So your, your reading was spot on. That's Thank great. You. And for anyone watching, if you wonder like, oh, how can I do a reading? It's, um, well, Uma teaches, I teach. Uh, there are plenty of people who teach, but really it doesn't matter what technique you're using. I don't care if you're doing like traditional tarot or if you're doing the shaman cards or you know, any, you know, angel cards, I don't care what, it all comes down to when you are drawing the cards, you allow the energy of the situation to pull the cards for you. You know, just like when you're doing pendulum work, you're not the one in charge, the energy is in charge and it will always, pretty much always pull the right cards. Yeah. And, you know, cards, pendulums, all that kind of stuff. It's really, it's tools like people like Benita and me, we don't need them. We use them. It's easy. It's like, you know, we can use it's them. Fun. It's fun, but we don't need them. And you want to work up to a place where you can do what we call a cold read, which is you have no tools. You just do a straight reading. Mm -hmm. And that would look something like if I'm tapping into Benita and I'm trying to figure out this mystery man in February, <laughs> um, curious right and she gave me permission um oh man I'm getting, I'm getting like a tall guy 67 years old salt and pepper hair european you see that sounds like my kind of guy actually if he was yeah. scottish he'd be perfect i know he has an accent and i know he just has really he has beautiful black hair but it's salt and peppered and he's just gorgeous and well, he's tall and he's into metaphysics and spirituality and very passionate. So um, that's, you know, and that's a cold read. That's not cards. That's a cold read. And that's where you right. really want to go with it is you use the tools. I use the tools because it's, it gives me structure to a reading. Mm -hmm. But if I do like a spiritual assessment for 30 minutes, I just sit there and I cold read for 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. then the next 20 minutes is um, me pulling cards that always backs up what I just said. And then 10 minutes of, you know, Q and A. So there's many different ways to do this. Yes. Any questions, you guys? At least on my side, I don't see, I see people. Yeah, let's see. Hi, I everybody. see lots of, um, Oriana is a Celtic goddess bringing in movement, communication, rest, ghosts, fertility, and leadership. Yes. There's that. Thank you, Debbie. That. Thank you. Yes. That is perfect for me in Mexico. I mean, they, there's so you know, what's really cool is like when I'm, whatever country I'm in, the primary uh, spirits of that country are the ones that really come. Like, you know, when you're in this country, people are like, oh yeah, my Native American spirit guide. Yeah. Well, it's not like everywhere in the world. These are the indigenous people of here. When I go to Mexico, I get people who are, you know, while they're connected with Native America because it's still America, the spirit guides are really different, really, really different. They're like Aztec Mayan kind of guides. And when I go to, you know, like Scotland and Ireland, I get all these wonderful Druidic and Viking Celtic kind of guides. So it is very exciting. And when you tap into the ghosts and the dead of a place, you can get a wealth of knowledge and history and culture that, you know, of, of what happened in the past. I love, I'm going to sound like a weirdo, but I love working with old ghosts. Just yeah. love it. And um, in Mexico, there's a lot. <laughs> a lot they don't think of death the way we do here it's a whole different <laughs> much more comfortable relationship this is why i'm gonna by the way i'm gonna try to guys if you're on my watch party i want you to come over to bonita woods because i don't have any questions here so i'm gonna stop my watch party and then come over to bonita so i can chime in there 
Um, so come over okay. to me the woods if you guys want to join us. But I have to tell you, like we, I keep saying we are like, um, what do you call it? Sisters, because I'm going to Mexico and you're going to Mexico. You know yes. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so crazy to me that we, yes, um, indeed. like we keep lining up a lot of, with our stuff. <laughs> Yeah, but I think I'm going to be going to bed earlier every night than you two. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> oh, you got a lot of questions over on yours. I, I guess I do. I do. Oh, people are just saying hello and stuff. Yeah, like just hellos that. and stuff. And I'm like, I so appreciate this. And I'll definitely, oh, here, if you're answering questions, um, a guy who's been on your mind wonder if it's random that he'll be reaching out to you um uma do you want to do that that's more your wheelhouse than mine yeah. because you're the denise clark um a particular yeah. guy i've spoken to lately has been on my mind for the past week i'm wondering if this is random or if he'll be reaching out to me soon <laughs> debbie you're cracking me up <laughs> 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 Debbie is offering to take this like Superman of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, I do feel that there's some sort of connection there that you guys haven't made a complete cut. And that's why he's thinking of you. You're thinking of him. But it's kind of like that question of what comes first, the chicken or the egg? So did you start thinking of him first and then he started thinking of you? Or did he start thinking? So it's one of those things. Um, if you don't mind it, then it's just a little stroll down memory lane. But if it's really bothering you, then go ahead and make that cut. Because there seems to be a connection there, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Leah says, it would be neat to hear how it comes through, ladies, like Uma and the evidential readings. I would love to hear more about it. Same for Bonita. Oh, okay, cool. Bonita, okay. do you want to go first or you want me to go? Yeah, I will say that. Um, like, Denise, the reason I handed your question to Uma is, like, everyone has a different frequencies or connections that are more comfortable to them, their ease of access. That's one reason why we have different mediumship and psychic intuitive spiritual tools, because um, some people resonate really well with pendulums, some people resonate really well with cards, with whatever. Um, of course, you know, not to toot our own horns, but Uma and I are considered like master intuitives. Um, and this is not because we're like ascended masters or anything like that. What it means is we're both trained in a broad spectrum of skills. Just like when I was a chef, I, before Gordon Ramsay went and did his like cute TV show, I was very proud to be classified a master chef meaning I could pretty much go into any kind of kitchen and know how the cuisine would be prepared. Like I could roll into any kitchen and just sort of join in. Uh, you know, I was versed in every kind of culinary arts. So we're like master intuitive healer teachers. Um, however, you have like uh, people who do earth magic, like uh, earth gatekeepers, uh, a lot of shamanic practitioners are like really connected with earth, um, people who do animal spirit magic, elementals. Uh, you have like evidential mediums, psychic mediums, people who connect with people who have passed. Um, and they're also more likely to be also like house clearers or helping people go move beyond uh, death doulas, things like that. Um, so the, the people who work with earth magic, it's usually, you call them lower realm people because a lot of work they do does bring them into earth. Uh, people who work with, uh, as evidential mediums or people who have passed, you call them middle realm people who are working a lot with like human souls. I usually work in what's called the higher realm. Uh, the Akashic Library. I mean, those of you who know me knew when we were kids, my siblings and I were always playing in the Akashic Library and getting into mischief there. Um, I'm more comfortable accidentally walking into other dimensions mm -hmm. than staying put in this one. So I'm a higher realm person. 
it's not, it's sort of like in a choir, you have, you need to have the alto and the soprano, otherwise you just have one note. Uma and I are both trained in all of these realms. However, I automatically go to the higher realm and I have to like pull myself down. I don't know about Uma, I can't speak for her, but I know she does middle realm a lot better than I do. I so love, love middle realm and I dip into higher realm when I'm doing seership. So um, I was going to answer, what's her name? Leah. I was going to answer Leah's uh, com question about how I do it. Um, it depends on what I'm doing, Leah. So as far as I know, I'm a reader where I, I read cards, of course, and read for situations. I am a medium where I connect with loved ones on the other side. I am a psychic. I can read object material. And then I'm also a seer. So whenever I do seership where I can get like with Benita, I am pretty like 90% sure about that guy because yeah, <laughs> I really am I'm like 90% sure because when I do seership, it's quite detailed down to like the last hair on the head. Like it's very, very detailed. And I have the ability to see into the future with quite with detail. Now for me to do that though, I have to go higher um, and I can feel the shift within me. So Leah, when I'm usually working, I can just, my whole body feels almost like it's like a battery. And I get, when I'm doing evidential mediumship, I will feel a shiver go up my spine. And that's how I know a spirit person is here. And then when I do seership, um, it's not necessarily me that's affected. What happens is, is like the whole world just slows down and I'm in a bubble and everything's very slow-mo. And then I get very, um, intricate details about what's about to happen and that's how I know I'm in seership. Mm -hmm. so, I hope that answers her question. Yeah, I like that. And for me, I usually work just as a divine conduit. Um, and those of you, I did a bunch of sessions the last few days, so you guys um, who were in sessions know. Um, I open myself up. However, I am well practiced in my energy network mm -hmm. and my chakras and my connections. So when I open myself up, I really know what I'm doing. Um, I don't recommend everyone run around opening yourself up because you don't know, like, you don't know what will jump in. Um, for me, whatever jumps in is what I need to jump in. So I open myself up and I invite, um, if someone has a question, whoever among their guides, their guardians, their past lives, their soul, you know, their non-physical friends, mentors, soul family, you know, whoever their angelic uh, crew to come through and tell me. And um, as the session goes on, it goes from me passing along information to the information just flowing through me. And you know when I'm like really doing it because I'm speaking very articulately, very intelligently, and I have no idea what I'm saying. You know, I can't edit. If I try to edit, yeah, then I'm going to mess it up. Oh, yeah. It'll just drop. By the way, Bonita, you have a question from Patricia. Oh, yeah. Um, well, she said, Arcturian realm, is that as high as the galactic counselors? Um, the... Arcturians are members of the Galactic Council. Mm -hmm. The uh, Galactic, imagine like the United Nations, only there's representatives from everywhere. Can you guys guess what star system I'm from? I, I really am my star <laughs> system. I don't know. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I, when I tell you, you're going to like laugh because you're, you're, you're going to totally get it. Can anybody get guess what star system I'm from? I have to give it a couple seconds because I know there's like okay. a delay. So I'll talk for a moment about the Galactic Council because oh, actually. Patricia yeah. has a second question for you. And oh, yeah. The question is, do we have gatekeepers? Um, well, I mean, I'm a gatekeeper. When I'm not in life, one of my jobs is to be a gatekeeper along with uh, angels. Um, and that's, I spend a lot of time being a gatekeeper for the Akash, but not just the Akashic library, the entire Akashic realm, because there's always like lower frequency beings that want to sneak in and cause mischief and gobble up a lot of good energy. Um, but the thing to remember is 
everyone has free will, not just humans. Every living creature of the physical and non-physical has free will. Yeah. One thing that makes us special is we can reclaim ourselves. I can have an entire tantrum, say horrible things, and then go, oh my yeah. God, what yeah. the <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a chef. I can be feisty. <laughs> <laughs> And then I can return to myself, apologize, try to undo the damage, <laughs> but I can return to myself. Most of the beings that are in existence, they can't. So when their free will takes them like to make choices where they have like a tantrum or something, they fall away from their collective. Mm. They fall away from their resonance. They can't get back without help. She, so if they keep falling away, they turn into demons. She clarified about gatekeepers that protect us when channeling. And I just want to jump in oh, oh, oh. before Bonita answers that, because we did in evidential mediumship, we do have gatekeepers and they used to be around for a long part of time. But now what we're finding is that the mediums of today don't actually have gatekeepers anymore because they're connecting straight in and they don't need like a third party there. But I don't know how you're going to answer this, Benita, from the work that you do about channeling. What I encourage people to do is um, before you're doing channeling and open up, make sure you work your energy centers, make sure your root chakra is always deeper and wider than your crown chakra is tall and high, always. And really work it so you can support you know, the root chakra and crown yeah. chakra are really one, two sides of one chakra. Mm -hmm. So you need both of them to be fully connected and supported. And then invite your guardian angel to come nestle in your crown chakra and tell your guardian angel, please be my gatekeepers so that only your frequency on up can come into my, come in and connect with me. I'm really glad you talked about that concerning the root chakra. Because a lot, what I have to work with, with my students when we're doing psychic development is they have to be more grounded. Oh yeah. So I am so thankful that you actually said that because I, I keep telling them like, you have to be more grounded. Um, you have another question, Benita. Uh, Debbie said, can you provide some guidance on how to open my third eye? Mm. Um, I, I, I'm going to speak and then I want to hear what Uma has to say. The okay. first thing is your third eye is not about seeing what's around you the way you see with your eyes. I mean, for some people that happens, but it's about receiving information and accepting it, allowing it to fill up within you. So when you open your third eye, it's really uh, about opening your um, trust and inviting what you need to come into you, accepting it and then letting it unfold. I've had times like um, where I'll get a download and the download might take 10 seconds or a minute, or I'll see like a little, like a couple of, like a little sketch run in my mind's eye. But then when I go and I explain it, it might take me 20, 30 minutes from a very short, like under a minute, you know, experience. Yeah. Because I allow my third eye to send it down and open up. Your third eye is dependent upon your trust. Not just trust pointing outward. Yes, I trust God. I trust my angel trust within. If you don't trust within, your third eye is going to have a rocky time. So when you're like, I'm opening up, please open my third eye. And you hear in the back of your mind, our beloved child, we are here for you. You're like, did I just make that up? Is that real? That shuts the third eye down. So everything that comes in, everything that comes in. Open up my third eye, please give me a sign. Oh, look, I just found a feather. Oh, well, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's the third eye. It's so true. You're speaking so much truth here tonight. <laughs> yes. Truth bomb. Truth 
awesome. But I mean, that's really what it comes down to is we're waiting for a mystical, magical third eye awakening, like all those great you know, guru hippies of the 1960s promised us. But for most people, really, um, what it comes down to is trusting everything you receive is real. And if you trust that it's real, then you allow the reality to show itself. You have another question. Gina Palmer said, I had a psychic tell me that she'd never seen someone who is in their Akashic records like mine. What do you think about that, Benita? I thought it was natural for me, LOL. Uh, oh my word, I'm so jealous. <laughs> 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 that is so cool. Um, well, um, I will say awesome, totally awesome. Secondly, People say what they say, like, you don't know her experience. You don't know how formulaic she is. She may see you and go, wow, I've never seen that before just because she hasn't. Yeah. But I'm totally impressed that that's the kind of statement you would be given. I think that's wonderful. I, I am going to, okay. I, <laughs> I am going to be teaching an online uh, Akashic Record series. And I think I'm going to have to break it into like sections because I can teach the Akashic records like once a week for the next 10 years and still be Brilliant. going into new material. So I am, if you go to my website, which is my name, bonitawoods.org and enroll in my online school, uh, which is the online classes tab of my website then you'll get emails when I start doing Akashic Record classes. And they will be affordable. I'm, a, I'm like a big fan of online classes being affordable. And, uh, and I appreciate the hearts that came up with that. Yes. Um, so let's see. Leanne needs to finish um, her question. She said, how can you, Leanne, can you finish your your thing? Well, I thought having the guardian angel would be a good gatekeeper in her crown. Mm -hmm. Or is that? No, this is another, another person. Oh, Leanne. Oh, hi, Leanne. Uh, Debbie says, thanks for that insight, Benita. My pleasure, Debbie. Good luck. Good luck. Um, because you always have a lot going on, Debbie. So, you know, like you have like amazing potential. Um, so what, what are we answering now? Oh, uh, so Leanne, we're still waiting for Leanne to write in about, she's got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because her question is about distractions and she got distracted. <laughs> like you can't make that up. You can't make that up. Oh, wow. Oh, this is funny. Um, okay. So she said, how can you stop? the distractions when you are communicating within higher realms. <laughs> <laughs> three, three posts. <laughs> I'm just messing. That's perfect. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, do you want to start that one? Because my answer is going to be very serious. So, well, well, mine is kind of too, because, um, mm -hmm. If I get distracted, I'm not in the higher realms. Mm. That simple. Um, when well, I'm in the higher realms, I'm almost, for me, mm -hmm. for me, I'm almost like in a trance. So yeah. everything else just fades away. So if I get distracted, that means that I am back, I'm out of it mm -hmm. because I'm back in the mental realm. So I don't know how you would answer that, Benita, but that would be my answer. Yeah. Um, if 3D world is distracting me, then obviously, um, I mean, there are times when I'll like nip up to the Akashic Library while I'm taking a walk in the woods. And then I do kind of go in and out, but, um, you know, but that's okay because there are the distractions are fun. You know, or if I'm doing dishes and the higher realm is chatting with me so that I'm not bored, um, you know, I'll, I'll go in and out, but that's not serious work. That's fun work. Um, but 
I, I interpreted that as like, I'll go to the higher realm for a purpose. And then I get distracted by what's going on up there. And the next thing you know, I'm like having party time with light beings. I'm like, oh, I that totally so forgot. I came up here to do some actual work. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> no, I, oh my gosh, you just hit on something because I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> you hit on something because it's like. I do Akashic soul realignment, which oh, yeah. is, I do like, I do readings for Akashics, but not like Benita, Benita to me is like just boss at it. But I do Akashic soul realignments where I find out like pretty much the trauma. And then we do the healing for the trauma in the Akashics. But what's funny is, is like, I'm laughing because you, you would uncover something like say a tear in the golden web, right? Mm -hmm. And then the story develops. Now you're watching like a movie of somebody's past life. No lie. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm making this shit up. But then people are <laughs> like, no. oh my God, I have that same problem today. And I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Leah. I didn't mean to laugh. It was just. Oh, this, we kind of laugh at this stuff. I mean, when we take it seriously, then, you know, it makes energy heavy. Like you'll oh. notice the more people take their, I am a psychic intuitive. I'm very serious. <laughs> That's not us. Bonita, yeah. Leanne clarified. She said, I feel like I'm in the trance. Then something wakes me or so. I'll be honest. If something wakes you, then it's time to come out. Yeah, that could be. There's also, uh, you know, I'm always talking about work your en energy centers, work your energy centers. It's like going on a marathon run when you haven't been working out. Yeah. If you want to really hold your connection, you got to do your due diligence. And um, I have, uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, any of the Harness Your Inner Fire videos are about that. But it's about uh, really making sure, like each of your chakras, they're not just like orbs of light. These are like bustling cities that are like glowing yeah. with active energy. And, you know, when you practice kundalini yoga, that's all about like, con, you know, working with the movement of energy, not only in your body, but outside of your body, above and below. That's where like the real work happens. And Jen, is Jen Ankeley on here? She's one of my best friends and she is a kundalini yoga instructor. And she, uh -huh. we would travel to Arthur Finlay College together every year. And we would like get a dorm room together and every morning we would wake up and she would do Kundalini yoga with me. And let me tell you, those readings I would do that day mm -hmm. would knock your socks off. Debbie Weaver has, um, oh, Jen is on. Jen, shout out yeah. to you, Jennifer Ankeley. If you guys see her on there, hit her up. She is the most amazing Kundalini yoga instructor ever Jen, in her entire life. She could do long distance sessions. Okay. Yeah. Jen, put comments. your website, put your contact info in the comments, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jen list your website because I'm watching her on my watch party and then I'm going to add it into Bonita's comments as well, because she's yeah. so, and she's an evidential medium like me. We both are being mm -hmm. mentored by Mavis Patilla. She's just amazing. But yeah. uh, Bonita, there's a question for you from Debbie Weaver. Uh -huh. What tactics do you recommend for getting grounded? Um, Depending on where you're at, like whenever possible, just like going outside is good or, you know, lying on the floor and just like getting your body physically grounding is always good. But honestly, um, if I tell my feet to relax, so all the energy in my body is flowing through my feet into earth, that helps a lot. Like we, we get so busy with glowing and emanating that we forget if energy is coming in, we really want it to go through us into earth. And when the energy is flowing all the way through into earth, that's when you, you know, you don't want to be a helium balloon or you don't want that vertigo feeling or that pressure in your head. You got to have the energy fully flowing. Um, and so I find when I start getting a little too, woo, I'll just say to my feet, relax, let it flow. And I feel everything just like dump out of my body and go through. And I like come back down. 
Um, I'll do a meditation where I'm a tree, an ancient tree with roots going deep into earth. Um, I will visualize my crown chakra and root chakra as being a, the hourglass. And my root chakra has to go very, very deep, very, very wide. Um, and then my crown chakra will do whatever it wants, but the root chakra is always deeper and wider than the crown chakra is tall or wide. That helps a lot. Um, how about you, Uma? What do you do when you need to ground? I avoid people at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, because of my center and because, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm just, somebody asked me to list all my contacts of people I've been mentioning. Cause you guys know, I'm like, I'm big about referring people. Like we, we're a community. We have some amazing people and y'all need to know about them. So I just listed, I'm so sorry, but I'll answer that in a second. I listed Katie Carlton of Infinity Energy Wire Wraps, Jennifer Enkeli for, um, what we, what were we talking about? Kundalini yoga. And then we yeah. I talked about, Ooh, Kristen, Kristen Gilbert. Oh yeah of wave of lights i think oh, that's Kristen's so special i love Kristen, and yeah god she just makes my heart tingle <laughs> she has such purity in her oh okay i got jen's email um her oh, website seven lights healing for those of you listening it's seven lights healing dot com this is my girl she's out in california she does evidential mediumship readings and she's a kundalini yoga instructor you can't get better than that right um okay so how do i ground i do i really do avoid people um when i do big events where i have to do like if i do a festival i'll do 20 readings in a day and usually the way i schedule my schedule is saturday i'll teach a class to like a large number of people then on sunday i'll do like a festival so monday i'm completely off i'm off of social media i'm off of the phone and the tv and everything i just sit in my house i meditate i sleep and um i actually eat like a huge beef plate. So oh. usually, yeah, Rob yeah. and I, like after we do like expo, uh -huh. pathways expo, cause we do about 20 readings each. Um, we would go out to like Longhorn Steakhouse and get a steak. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kelly said, Uma, I heard Lyran. Lyran? No, I'm not Lyran. <laughs> I love that you guys are trying to guess what original soul group I am from. Once you find out, you'll you'll definitely get it. Yeah. And tell me when you want me to just give up the answer. I'm, I'm just trying to. Um... Okay. So, you know what? I'm going to talk about the Galactic Collective a little bit. Yes. that's gonna be. And fun. then after that, if we don't have any answers from people, uh, you can, um, you can tell everyone. Okay. So the Galactic Collective, um, and this is where I'm so glad that I don't mind when I sound wackadoodle in public. <laughs> Um, the Galactic Collective, and they, they have a formal name, the Galactic Inner, I, I know they've got a long formal name that a lot of people seem to know them by. Um, when you're connected with them, other people who are connected with them, when they see you, they see it. So I cannot tell you how many times people have come up to me and said, oh, you work with the Galactic collective of wayfarers and gatekeepers and you know the long name of like yeah the collective yes <laughs> yes yes i do um it has representatives from everywhere the galactic collective was formed when gaia decided to create physical reality and she brought in representatives from you know the angelic realm this realm the that realm but keep in mind this was before there was 3D, before the universe. And they all planned the universe. They planned physical reality together. The different frequencies, you know, just because we're here in this space, there are other entire like universe existences in our same universe, different frequencies that are totally different from, from what we have. As more civilizations, societies, life forms came along, of course, representatives would go to the collective. 
there are people who are living on our planet in the here and now who are helping with the healing of the planet who were original members of the Galactic Collective. Mm -hmm. um and recently i was working with the uh the empress the reptilian empress she's white white energy white light reptilian mm -hmm. so she's not of the ones that went off and what what and she's trying to herd them all back to her in fact we created a portal directly to her so that whenever i come across reptilian beings we send them straight to her so that she can heal them and return them to the way, you know, their, their healthy, loving state. So, um, so that's a galactic collective. And when I go into the Akashic library, I can do research. When I go to the galactic collective, it's more like what's going on in the here and now I can get advice in the moment. Um, and so Every one of us, everyone alive, anywhere, has connections, representatives in the Galactic Collective. So, Uma, where are you from? I know I've been, like, laughing about <laughs> watching everybody just try to guess. I, my original, like, like Benita said, we've traveled around, so it's not uncommon for us to, I probably have spent some time on um, Lyran because I do have that lion energy, but my original soul group is Pleiades. I am Pleiadian. And that, that makes so much I sense. Said, yeah, because, you know, the Pleiadians, they're about, they're the visionaries. So they like to plan, they see the future, they like to create, they, they're not so good about follow through. That's <laughs> why I actually employ um, a lot of Syrians at my place of business because Syrians are very good about getting the stuff done. So I actually, and it was interesting because when I found that I was Pleiadian, I was kind of like, that makes sense. Um, because you know, the, the Pleiadians came down to Atlantis and Lemuria and I know that I've had some time in Atlantia. So when I looked at Pleiadian, it's in the star system of Taurus and that's my twin flame. He's Taurus and I'm Capricorn. So I just thought it there was you go. really fitting. Um, What's your original soul group, Benita? Can I ask you? Do you guys want to guess first before Benita gives the name? I think Anyone who knows me already knows. <laughs> let's, let's have them guess. Have you guys guess about Benita's original soul group? I, I almost want to say Pleiadian just because I feel like we're so alike. But I've been there. Been there, done that. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, you know what? It, it's not, I don't have an original soul group because I'm a spark. Okay. So, um, you know, what's funny is I was talking with some childhood friends and they were teasing me about how, when I was a kid, I would tell everyone I'm a spark. Oh, <laughs> that's just adorable. So when I was at the cone of inception, before I matured enough to resonate with what soul group I'm supposed to join, I took off and I went adventuring. So, um, I can see that. Yeah, I went everywhere. I, yeah, I mean, I'm like ADHD from the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> uh, but I spent time with like everyone. I joined with, you know, I hung out with the Palladians. I hung out with the Lemurians. I hung out with the angels. I hung out here. I hung out there until eventually I was captured and sent to a uh, renegade spark school. And <laughs> I can see you doing that. I was a truant. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was told that it was time to mature. And then uh, my resonance showed the Akashic Library. So I was sent there to work. But um, sparks are our own soul group, actually. It's just we don't exist together. We exist on our own. We're, um, I do not have a soulmate. I do not have a twin flame. I don't have any of that. Um, however, when we sparks come together, then we're very powerful. Our role is to um, connect with everyone and to support everyone to become their best. Um, and also we're a big part of the reclamation. Like here on earth, we talk about the war between light and dark or whatever. 
in a higher realm level like that you see higher realm <laughs> there we go um they're they're calling it the reclamation which is all the light beings are going and claiming the ones who have gone into darkness and returning them to light um so i go into the darkest realms and i have this energy grid that opens up behind me and the angels with their swords of flame their flaming swords ride my energy grid so they can go into dark realms without becoming corrupt and they glide on my energy and this is something all sparks do not just me mm -hmm. and we go and we touch everyone who's dark and they return to themselves and a lot of them are like thanks i've been waiting for help and they like take off they shoot off but at least a third of the beings that we go and we touch when they rise up they pull out swords of flame and keep in mind angels aren't running around hacking anyone to death they're angels they're cord cutting they're releasing everything below the frequency of love um, and it's not really swords we see it as swords it, they're, they're, it's light and a lot of the demons are actually angels that chose to go there and remain undercover so that once the reclamation started they can rise up and and help with it so you're like what's my soul group that that's my soul group and that's what i do like when i'm not like me in life i'm doing my thing but my human soul is like doing a lot of stuff my spark soul my original soul is busy running around like saying where is the biggest baddest dark let's go my, my spark soul is a little crazy well i gotta tell you about rob in a second but we have a, a bunch of comments so let me try to get to them um love i don't know leah benavides but i love her already oh, she said yes. she's please. an amazing artist amazing oh, artist and mm -hmm. animal lover she said please do feature zoom meetings like this with both of you you're you are amazing and beautiful Thank you, Leah. Well, Leah, I just, I, I don't know you, but I adore you already. Um, Megan Davey guessed that I was Pleiadian. Awesome. She, said, she knew that. And then she said, Benita connected to my energy before we met via Joey and said, I was a luminous light being. I've always loved that. Totally resonates. And I know Megan Davey and she is absolutely, absolutely a luminous light being. Oh and yeah. Megan, if you want to go ahead and post in the comments, um, I know you are organizing Interfusion Festival. So I'd like to shout that out so that people That's can know fun. that Interfusion, Interfusion Festival coming up in January. Megan is one of the coordinators. Please go ahead and plug that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Post that on my wall too. Yeah. Lee. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got to post it on my wall and Leah's wall. Um, I'm sorry, Bonita's wall. Leah said, when listening to this, it makes me feel as if I'm with family. Benita, as if I've discussed in our previous sessions, Uma has such beautiful energy. My first time meeting her. My first time meeting you, and I love this. And Leah said, thank you, Benita. And Debbie said to you that it does fit you about being a spark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. What questions do you guys have for us? Because we're going to be signing we're actually, up. In second, yeah, right? we're running over time, so we just have a few more minutes. A few more minutes. What did you want? Um, you were going to say something, Benita? No, just that we only have a few more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Mexico. Oh, I, I did have something to say about Rob. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to Mexico tomorrow with Rob. And then I was like, oh, I got to say something about Rob. So Rob, his original soul group of origination is the Blue Light Travelers. Oh, cool. And yes. So what was interesting, so the Blue Light people, there's different. There's like Blue Light designers, Blue Light planners, Blue Light travelers. The travelers are a little bit lower down. They're like the technicians. Mm -hmm. But listen, it so accurately described Rob. Because Rob, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Rob is my partner. He's my twin flame. He owns the Healing Frequency in Warrington, Virginia. And I'll put his, I'll put a little tag for him there in a second. But he loves to work, like the blue light travelers work with people in the ditches. They go and find the people that are the craziest, the angriest, the loneliest, like, you know, like the, the ones, like, let's be clear, as healers, sometimes we shy away from certain demographics. We're just like, no, I'm good. Not Rob. Like when there's a fire, we're running out. He's running in. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And it's really interesting when we got his rating done because he is a blue light traveler. He likes to get people where they are like the most vulnerable, hurt, pained, addictions, suicide, whatever, and work with them to lift them out. And I, I just think that's outstanding. And I wanted to mention it because um, as a Pleiadian, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit fearful of that. I like to work with people who have already done their work mm -hmm. and are ready for the visionary part, the, the future, you know? Rob likes to work with people who can't even see the future because they're like just trying to get through today. And I'm just like, that's so amazing. So if any of you are blue light travelers, wow, you like my hat's off to you guys. You guys do amazing work. Very cool. Yeah, I just wanted to say that because that's just like amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you guys so much. And like Uma, you leave for Mexico tomorrow, right? Yes, tomorrow in a couple hours. Then as soon as you get back, you're doing your new year, new you program. I am. I'm doing uh, Rob and I, the same dude I was talking about. <laughs> I have two things coming up in January, uh, Saturday, January 4th. I'm starting my seven month intuitive development program. So if any of you are interested, you can hit me up about that. That is seven months. We meet one Saturday a month. I have a closed Facebook group. I'm already 90% filled. So I already wow. have, I have a couple of spots left, like about, I think four now that's left if anybody's interested and we journey i work with you as a mentor from january to july and we go through your stuff it's intuitive development so where i'm teaching topics like chakras and stuff like that but i'm also going into your stuff so it's it's deeply personal and it, it just breaks you out of that stuff so that's the the first saturday in january and the second saturday and sunday rob and i are doing the new year new year retreat which is a two day transformational coaching workshop. So Saturday, we call it out with the old, we clear you of the past decade, mental and emotional clearings. And then Sunday we do the goal setting, the mapping for the new decade. So I'll put the links in there. Thank you, Bonita, for letting me um, say that. And what do you have coming up in January? Okay. Well, I just want to say, first of all, your two programs, I've heard so many good things about them. It's been yeah. going like for a while and people like don't even know about it. And I'm like, no, like a lot of these people that are, you know, in the area right now or through my program. I, I love the programs that I have. Yeah. And the new year, new you program, you have people who do it every year. Like this is how they face their new year. Yes. Yeah. They, I, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I have, um, Guruji, Arun and Priya will be here this week. I can't believe it. This is this They're week? going to be, um, so I want to tell you guys a little bit about Prana Shakti because you know, people are like, I have modalities. I don't, you know, I already have eight certifications I don't use. Prana Shakti is, um, I mean, really what you make of it. This has been my daily practice for many years now. It, as I said, it connects you with every dimension and every frequency with any, every dimension. And if people ask, how is it that I'm able to visit alternative timelines? Like, um, I'm so lazy. When I write a book, when I'm working on the book, I'll go into alternative timelines where I'm writing the book and see what I've written. And then I come back to this one and I write. It saves me a lot of work, especially if I can go into alternative timelines a little in the future where the book is written and published and I'm working with editors, then I'll know like what will really like people want. And I can visit sometimes up to eight different timelines um, that are parallel to this and get a wealth of information. And then I'm a little spacey when I get back. Oh and yeah. Sometimes people laugh at me because I look at people I've known for years. I'm like, I'm sorry, who are you? I, I literally do that. My friends have a lot of, you know, <laughs> I, it can be really entertaining. Um, but all of this is because of the Prana Shakti work that I do. And when I go traveling and I go to great masters, uh, be it, you know, like shamanic, angelic, whatever, you know, I spend my time these days traveling, going up to masters and saying, may I sit with you? May I talk with you? May I hold space for you while you're doing your ceremonies? And, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm some like chick from McLean, Virginia, going to a master and asking this. The, you would think they would be very polite saying, no, you don't belong here. You need to leave now. <laughs> I mean, really, that's what I was expecting. 
but they feel the prana shakti in me and they automatically know that I resonate in a way that they resonate. They treat me as a master. And when I ask them questions and I ask really detailed questions, they share with me information that normally they would only share with other masters or they're like advanced apprentices. Um, and at this point now, because of the prana shakti energy, I've been able to meet with so many masters that now when I meet with a master of one modality um, and I ask them a question, I'm able to say, oh, that's so interesting. Someone else says it this way, someone else says it that way, or have you ever thought of this? And they're able to get as much back as I am. And again, not because I'm a master, knowing about something and doing something are not always the same, but the energy flows through me and it allows me to feel the frequency of, of um, cosmic multidimensional being. And especially for people who do Akashic work, this is very powerful. Mm -hmm. this is wonderful for people who are here to heal the planet this is also powerful and wonderful. So if you're available in the Northern Virginia area, the first couple of weeks of January, feel welcome to join us. Uh, the global leader, Guruji Arun, is going to be teaching classes personally and at a huge discounted rate as a, a favor to me. After that, we're gonna be doing them online on my online school. So go to my website, sign up. We'll be doing a lot of awesome classes online. That's it. Then I'm going to go to Florida and then go to Mexico. And I don't know when I'm going to stop playing. D never. We are never going to stop playing. Are you kidding me? I just want to jump in about the Prana Shakti. Um, my knee's been bothering me and Bonita did Prana Shakti on it. And it was the most amazing thing to the point where I was like, okay, I'm already certified in 45 modalities. <laughs> I add one more, but unfortunately January doesn't, like my schedule's booked right. for 2020, but I'm going to see if I can get in on the April one and see mm -hmm. if I can put some stuff around, but January's booked out the whole time. But it was, you guys definitely need to take advantage of that. Yeah, he's, this guru is doing something good because it, I felt it, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, Leah said, such a huge honor, Bonita, learning from these elevated, illuminated souls, passing the information oh. on to you to share with us or practice on us. Love you both. Uh, and I agree with you, Leah. Like, I love the work that Bonita does, and I, I support her 100% because I just feel she she needs to be out there more. I, I feel she needs to be out there more. The I'll be out there on a mountaintop in a hot <laughs> spring. <laughs> Hang out with some shamans and artists. Yeah. I'll be down the street with other <laughs> shamans that's like doing peyote. <laughs> Drumming naked. Like that would, like we would be on the same path, but just quite different. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's where I'm going to be out there. Watch. I'm going out there. <laughs> and it was like, I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you all so much. This was a blast. And have a wonderful, wonderful night, day, you know, wherever you are. And thank you. We will definitely do this again. Definitely. And I just want to thank you all because this is my last event of 2019 and my last event of the decade. And thank you for sharing the because I like to pay attention to things like that. So I feel whoever's on this call tonight, we're connected somehow. So thank you for that. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my last event for the- It's uh, mine too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we spent it together. Yes. Very special New Year's. Debbie okay. ever said, planning to sign up for the Prana Shakti. And Jen Ankeley says, thank you. Oh, great. Oh, Debbie, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And there's Kelly. She's a prana shakti. She's uh, training to be a master teacher. Kelly Thompson in Baltimore, amazing Ooh. healer and very like amazing with prana shakti. Kelly, plug your website really quickly. Plug your website. Yes, Anthony please. Says, thank you both. Oh, Anthony, thank you for watching. Anthony's coming from Greenville, South Carolina. Well, He's one of my mentorship you. students. Him and his wife would drive up once a month for a mentorship program. 
Oh, how awesome. I know. I miss you guys, Anthony. Anthony. No. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, why thank you all so much. Thank you. Adoration. And we'll catch you next time in the next decade. <laughs> in the next decade. Bye, guys. Bye.